Popcorn Recap is back. Today, we will be talking about Yennefer's story in The Witcher. In her hometown of Vengerberg, Yennefer, a young lady with one of her shoulders standing higher than the other, and her jaw juts out to one side, attempts to return a flower to two lustful lovers outside a bon. The couple is disgusted by her appearance and they attack Yennefer, pinning her to the ground and hurling insults her way until she instinctively portals away to Aretuza. There, she meets Istrid, a young sorcerer who informs her that she's been mocked. He then creates an untraceable portal to send Yennefer back home, having been mocked from her portaling from Aretuza. A sorceress named Tissaia finds Yennefer and purchases her for four marks from her stepfather, less than half the price of a pig. Yennefer's mother objects, prompting her husband to denounce Yennefer as his daughter. Yennefer is forcefully taken from her home in Vengerberg and locked in a room in Aretuza. She looks at herself in the mirror, disgusted at her appearance. She shatters the mirror and grabs a shard of glass as she contemplates staking her own life. Despite slitting her wrists, Yennefer survives the night after her failed attempt to unalive herself due to Tissaia saving her. Later, after being called to the greenhouse, Tissaia explains the dangers of magic and how each one of them showed an aptitude for controlling it, making them conduits of chaos. Though magic itself is the control of chaos, Tissaia has gathered them for a trial. In front of them is a flower and a stone, and they are to lift the stone without touching it. All of the initiates are able to lift the stone, except for Yennefer, discouraged by her failed attempt. Yennefer flees the greenhouse. She finds Istrid and introduces herself. Soon after, the young women sit across from each other during an exercise on thought transference to determine their partner's greatest fear. However, after hours of analyzing her partner, Annika, Yennefer has failed to determine her fear and lies to cover up her inadequacies. Tissaia calls Yennefer out for her lie and rebukes her in front of the class. Yennefer retreats to Istrid and vents her shortcomings. He advises her to keep trying. He volunteers to be read. And Yennefer finally succeeds in thought transference. The two share a beautiful moment. The initiates are later taken to Torlara to test their ability to control the ultimate expression of chaos, catch lightning in a bottle. On Yennefer's turn, she fails causing the lightning to strike her, sending her across the room. Enraged, Yennefer shoots the lightning at Tissaia, who redirects it into the sky. Afterwards, Tissaia proceeds to relate to Yennefer, saying there are two types of mages, those who can control their emotions and those who let their emotions control them. Yennefer and Tissaia being the latter, in her fear of being sent home, Yennefer finds Istrid, who insists that they'll find a way. He can't show Yennefer what he knows because he has to ensure that the knowledge never reaches the Brotherhood. Istrid instead shows her the skulls of the elves who built Aretuza, explaining the elven history and how they were the original mages. He gives Yennefer a Finaweth, Using this plant, Yennefer summons a portal with no difficulty. Istrid is confused as to how she is able to conjure a portal on her first try. She reveals that her real father was a half-elf and was killed during the Great Cleansing. The half-elf blood caused her to be born with a twisted spine, and she believes that this is why no one could ever love her. Istrid kisses her proving Yennefer wrong about no one loving her. Yennefer takes the flower she got from Istrid to Tissaia, as it was a test to see if Yennefer could control her emotions long enough to get it from him. Yennefer asks if this means she's ready to ascend, and she is instructed to listen for the knock. That evening, Yennefer listens for the knock. However, it's not her door that Tissaia knocks on. She spies on Tissaia as she turns three of the initiates into eels. The rectoress calls for Yennefer and instructs her to push them into the water. Tissaia took away their control, but they still have power. Yennefer concludes that they're conduits for Aretuza. Many years later, Yennefer meets with the enchanter in preparation for the initiation day. Every girl he enchants leaves Aretu to a living work of art, no matter how challenging the task. But later, Yennefer is told that she is being sent to Nilfgaard rather than Eden as promised. Tissay reveals that it was her blood that finalized the chapter's decision. Sending a quarter elf to Eden would only further ostracize Sintra, given their hatred for elves. The rectoress explains that it was Stregaba who told the chapter about Yennefer's true father, and Yennefer realizes that the only way he could have known is if Istra told him. Yennefer refuses to attend the initiation. She confronts Istrid for telling Stregaba about her elven blood. The couple begin patronizing one another until Istrid tells Yennefer that no amount of power or beauty will make her feel worthy of either. She finds the enchanter and demands that he make her beautiful. Despite not having the necessary herbs to sedate her during the procedure, Yennefer demands that he go through with it. Yennefer removes her clothes and is strapped to a chair. She requests that the enchanter leave her purple eyes and scars. Before proceeding, he informs Yennefer there is a cost to a creation. To be reborn, Yennefer will bear no more. The enchanter surgically removes Yennefer's reproductive organs. He uses them to form a paste that when applied to Yennefer's skin, causes a transformation. 
Yennefer screams in agony as internal flames crack her skin. Her body takes shape, her spine and jaw forcefully straightens, following a successful transformation. Yennefer arrives at the Aretusen Ball, catching everyone's eye, completely reborn and appearing almost entirely like a new person. She greets the King of Vengerberg, who discards Fringilla in favor of her. The two then dance center floor, and she wins Eden as she originally wanted. Thirty years have passed, and Yennefer hasn't aged a day. Yennefer is escorted with Queen Callis and her baby Teleria. The Queen asks her to stay with them there to keep her company, but Yennefer must return to Eden after bringing her safely back to court. The Queen envies Yennefer as the King's mage. They are later ambushed and attacked. All of the men are killed and their bodies dismembered by a large insect-like creature. Yennefer opens up a portal sending them to a desert. Yennefer explains to Callus that the assassin is sent and paid to kill the queen as she has run out of chances to provide the king a male heir. The assassin follows them to the desert and they teleport to a cliff. The queen berates the mage as she wasn't able to foresee it. Yennefer teleports by herself, leaving the queen and her baby with the assassin. The queen begs to be spared and offers her daughter as a sacrifice. The assassin kills the queen. As the creature is about to attack the baby, Yennefer comes back and kills the creature grabbing the baby and teleports. But the assassin's knife catches them and kills the baby. Yennefer has failed to protect both the queen and the daughter. Years pass. Tissaia visits Yennefer whom she hasn't seen in years and warns her about being pure chaos as Yennefer is left with her to her own devices once she abandoned Eden. But her behavior flaunts in direct conflict with the Brotherhood's agenda cannot be tolerated, thus warning her that they will go after Yennefer. She begs her to return to Aretuza and offer her a chance of redemption but Yennefer refuses. One day, at a party enticed by Yennefer, she meets the witcher, Geralt of Rivia who asks for her help to cure Yaskia as he is attacked by a djinn. After putting Yaskia to a deep healing sleep, she suggests the witcher to bathe. She later summons the djinn. Geralt explains that since its amphora is broken, it's not possible to summon it. Yennefer needs Yaskia to make a wish, so she could capture it. She uses thought transference to get into Geralt's head and casts a spell. Upon waking up, Geralt goes back to help Yennefer and confesses that he is the djinn's master and he needs to make the last wish. She forces Geralt to make his wishes so she can become the vessel for the djinn. He asks him what he wants, and she responds everything before the djinn completely takes over Yennefer. Geralt whispers a wish and the djinn goes away. As it does this, the house breaks but the two of them manage to teleport before the roof and the ceiling collapse on them. They fight a little and then end up making love. Yennefer asks what Geralt wished for, but he doesn't respond to the question. Time passes, Yennefer and Geralt travel together with a bard. Geralt asks what they are doing there, and she tells him that she's there for the dragon as it has certain healing properties it's rumored to possess. Geralt concludes that she has come all this way for made-up fertility cues using fresh dragon hearts. He doubts her capabilities of becoming a mother. Yennefer is persistent in having a baby because the people who made her beautiful took her chance of becoming a parent. They later do it to make up for the fight they had. Later, after helping Villain Tretenmuth, he thanks the mage for her help and mentions the reason why Geralt doesn't want to lose her. Yennefer concludes that none of the feelings she has for Geralt is real because it was a wish that he made from the djinn. He insists that he made the wish to save her life, but Yennefer is persistent that she doesn't need his help. Geralt patronizes her and comments about wanting to have a baby. Villantra Tenmuth stops the two from arguing and explains that a sorceress will never regain her womb, and Geralt will eventually lose Yennefer despite him not wanting to do so. Yennefer later travels back to Oretuza and comes to find an emergency conclave of the Northern Mages is happening because Nilfgaard has taken over Monadal and is now attacking Sintra. Fringilla enters the meeting and convinces them that their kingdom is better under a new ruling. And if they don't take their side, they should just stay out of their way. The majority of people vote to let Sintra keep their proud tradition of fending for themselves, not to help them at all. Tissaia tells Yennefer that she and the others who didn't vote have plans to fight, and begs Yennefer to join them for her. They travel by boat to make their way to Sintra to help protect against those from Nilfgaard attacking. That evening, Yennefer is awakened to find a fireball fired by Nilfgaard coming straight for her. She halts the fireball midair and then redirects it. The sun has risen and the northern mages made it through the night. Unfortunately, Nilfgaard arrived much sooner than they anticipated and the northern armies are still a ways out. There are only 22 of them left as the others flee. They watch as a thick fog consumes the mountains around them, signaling Nilfgaard's encroachment. Tissaia orders Sabrina to take the villagers to the artillery room while she and Triss head down. Yennefer is instructed to keep watch on the tower and preserve her chaos. Yennefer watches from the tower as Nilfgaard's army approach us. She telepathically communicates with the others to alert them and order them to make their move. Yennefer watches from the tower as Nilfgaard breaks through their forces. Sabrina sneaks up behind Yennefer and stabs her in the abdomen with an arrow after being infected by a parasite. 
Two young boys, also under the control of the parasites, take their bottles of blue meteorite and drop them on the table filled with blue meteorite, causing a massive explosion on both ends of the keep that sends Yennefer and Sabrina flying off the tower. With Yennefer managing to stick the landing, Yennefer limps out of the keep, forced to witness the massacre that has unfolded as villagers of all ages lay dead on the grounds of Sodden Hill. She telepathically calls out to her fellow mages without response, telling them to hold the front line as more Nilfgaardians approach. Fringilla intercepts Yennefer's message. She tells Yennefer to stop fighting and join Nilfgaard. However, Yennefer stays true to her belief. Yennefer later finds Tissaia on the hillside. Tissaia has been severely weakened. But with the northern armies close, Yennefer refuses to give up. She looks Tissaia in the eyes and for the first time, admits that Tissaia saved her. It was now Yennefer's turn to save the continent. Tissaia urges her to let her chaos explode. Yennefer gets back to her feet, absorbs the fire that is consuming the keep and unleashes it all on the Nilfgaardian army. Yennefer later disappears without a trace as Tissaia and Geralt try to look for her. That's just the first season of The Witcher and only Yennefer's storyline. What did you think and will you be watching the new season?